Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and today we're going to do something so fun. We are going to work on red work. A lot of people have asked about red work and a lot of people want to know so here it is. Now we're going to do this in a series so this is the beginning one where we learn all the basics of red work and how to do it and then we're going to work on um, and do more difficult things. So let's first switch this to uh, US because there we go a little bit slow there and let's bring in our picture of what we're going to do. So let's go to artwork and mine is right on my desktop because that's where I tend to keep everything and I'm on desktop. And we're gonna do this cool pumpkin. Now this is just a picture that I found and it's just simple, easy, easy to do. So let's look at it. It's three inches by three inches. That's a little bit small. So why don't we try making it about four? four by four okay then let's look at it so that's four by four let's zoom out just a little bit we can actually hit zero and just fill the screen with it now it's hard to tell this is what they're measuring four by four but i want this to fit in my four by four hoop there's a lot of space there or bigger we can do it bigger so what i want you to do is click on the m key and it turns to this measurement tool and all you have to do is click and drag a line and it's going to tell you. So this, the pumpkin itself is only three inches. So I think we want that a little bit bigger. So let's hit the M key again to get rid of that. Let's go back to our select key and let's make this, how about 4.5 inches, a little bit bigger. Let's go back to our measure key. There we go, which was M, remember. Drag it straight across. And if you hold down the control key, did you see what happened there? Because you can measure it this way and it's not right. I want it to go straight across. So hold down the control key and it constrains it into 15 uh, degree increments. Super handy to do for just about anything. So now we've got it. It's almost three and a half. I like that. That's going to work. So that is how you set up your picture, how you want it to. So we're going to do red work. Now, there's certain ways of doing true wet red work. And what it is, is that, you know, we're going to do lines and we're going to follow all these lines, but it has to go around twice. So each line that we do has to have two lines on it. So it has to go out over everything exactly twice. And this is the only hard part about red work. A really good red work design will have, you know, say all this orange part in one go. It's all steady. It's meant to be quick and actually beautiful stitching with no jump stitches and no, you know, stops and starts. Obviously you have to do that. We're gonna do two colors in this one and maybe we'll venture in and do um, the bottom part. So we'll add another color. So remember that exactly two times, exactly twice. So why don't we write that down there? I'm just gonna pull up letters. So exactly two times, just so we remember what we're doing exactly two times. So each running stitch or back stitch or whatever you want to do has to have it go over twice. Now, a lot of people say, well, can't I use um, the branching? Yes, you can, except branching isn't going to follow the first rule that we have here. It is going to put everything into one and a lot of times branching does a brilliant job. So if you just want to do a couple things here, a couple things there, but the way it's going to automatically plot it out is that we could have this line once and this line three times. And that is okay, but it's not true red work. And when you stitch it out, it's going to show. Why? Because this single line is going to be thinner than this thick line. Now, if you want, like, for example, I picked a good one here. It's kind of darker in there and you see it's a darker orange. If you wanted it to look like that, that's okay, but you won't be doing true red work. But that's okay too. I'm going to show you guys how to do it properly and you can bend rules as you want. Um, but old fashioned 
true red work exactly two times. So what we have to do is seriously plot this guy out. This to me is the hardest part of how to do it. I can sit here um, normally and I will just look at it and I can go through the whole thing in my head and figure it all out. Um, and if I make a mistake, I can go back and do it. It's very difficult. So there's a few things you can do. You can have a general idea, dig in and try it. You might get frustrated and you might get stuck. But here's a couple ways of combating this. Why don't you print this guy out, print him out and grab crayons or pencil crayons or a pencil or a pen or something and manually plot it out. And you can put little arrows as to the direction. So up and back and, and plot it out so it goes exactly two times everything exactly two times so that's one way another way is that you could bring this image into a program called paint and you can uh, and it, that program comes with windows and you can digitally do it and you can just use your mouse to just plot it out and it's almost like a puzzle it'll take you a few minutes to do it so for this one try those two things and f see, you know, you can pause the video here and try to figure it out and then come back and we'll do it together and see if you got it right. I'm going to guess there's more than one way of doing it, but I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, remember, we got to, you know, the rules, the rules gone now. We're just going to kind of focus in on this. We want to be at around, let's have a look at it at 600% because that's where I digitize that. That is a bit big for me because I want you guys to see more of the screen. So we're not going to stick to that rule. I would like you guys to because it's super helpful. I want to check on my grid. Let's um, click off of that. I want to check on my grid, metric, check on my grid. Whoops, right click on it, show grid, and we want it to be one by one. And that way, when you zoom in, you're going to know, I know that looks terrible, but when you zoom in, you're going to know this is one millimeter. This is the distance, one millimeter. And it's so easy to figure out for your stitches, because we're going to mess around with stitch length a little bit on this one and get different looks. So the way I want to do it, and I'm just going to do a dry run and see what you guys think. I'm going to go here. That's one pass and I'm going to go up here and back again and up here and continue all the way around. So say we're ending here and then out on this side and go back to where we started. Now these lines are going to have two, but the outside is only going to have one. So then we're going to keep going and we're going to go around here and every line that we make is going to have exactly exactly two passes so let's start on it so let's do we're going to digitize now these are a little short so i have more screen so that's okay digitize and why don't we just do an open shape because there's a couple ways we can do it and i want to zoom in just a little bit more oh there's times to remind us and i want to start right here and i'm going to right click because we have some nice curves now you don't have to be you know, super precise on this, but zoom in a little bit better. Again, I'm just zoomed out so you guys can see better what I'm doing. And I'm going to go right about there and I'm going to zoom in so I can see it where the line goes because we want it to be probably there. And now we're going to go up here and we're going to follow this line. Again, I'm zooming in and out again. Sorry about that. And we're going to follow this line just like this. And we're going to take it, well, it goes to about there. Now, on our way back, I want to click exactly, exactly on my lines, on my nodes, rather. So I'm going to zoom in so I can make sure I hit them exactly. Now, that one looks a little off, but let's see. This is another reason why, you, you know what I've done there? Look, it's not exactly on. It'll go on on the next one. Left click and right click. So that's a right click because we're doing a curve. Right click. And now they're matching exactly on. If it helps you to fade the picture so you can see this, that's fine. And left click here and we're going to continue down. 
See, it's pretty easy so far. I'm going to fix those nodes because you look, I did something wrong. Oh no, but we're not going to do it quite yet. I don't want a whole bunch of nodes. Remember, we're working fairly small. We're going to go here. And we want this one to be a left click because it's a cusp. If we do it a right click and I hit enter and that's okay. I hit enter. So let's go back and look. Yep, that's looking okay. So if you do that or if you click off or something, don't worry. You can start again. Your machine will stitch it all out properly. We're just going to start where we left off and right click, right click. Let me get this down to a reasonable size. You can have your auto scroll on too if you want. I find it annoying, although it's really helpful for classes. Now this one kind of goes here is all it does so and that has to be a left click because otherwise let me sh let me show you if you do a right click because it's a curve and go back that's going to happen so backspace backspace left click and these were right clicks we should be able to get them right on and we do want them to match so we have our exactly twice going on right click and another right click and left click at the bottom and we're going to continue on to about there. And there we go. Right clicks, right clicks. I really carefully place them by what I see. And we don't want that one's a bit too close because we are going to be running back here and we don't want them touching. And let's go back. So left click at the top, right click, right click, right click being super careful to put them exactly where so it'll be nice and thick and really good looking when we're done. So the hardest part is plotting. Left click at the bottom. See that one worked out perfectly. I think I'm going to adjust those a little bit though when I'm done. But for now, I'm not going to worry about it. So now we're getting into these deep ones. Left click on the, whoops, I said it, but I didn't do it. How awesome is that? There we go. Left click. And I want this one to be a right click, right click, right click. And there we go. Right click, right click. And we're going to take it up kind of far. I don't want to go into there because I don't want them to cross over. Left click at the top and then we're going to go back with right clicks, back with right clicks. Back with right clicks, left click at the bottom. And we want to kind of, we want to right click in here and then a left click because we're going to go all the way up here. That's almost straight. So I'm still going to do a right click and see. And we're following along with the natural grooves of the pumpkin. And right click, take it here, left click at the top and go back on itself. So now we're getting two. We're getting there. You'll be surprised once you get the plotting out done. It's pretty easy because it, it's just following your design. Let's do a right click in the middle. Let's do a left click right there. And we're going to zoom up and we can, the least amount of nodes we do, the better. So let's do right to about here. And then that was a left click, remember? Right click and that'll move. Right click left click at the bottom and again if you get confused then you just we can go back and fix it and we're, whoops and we're going to do a couple of things i want right clicks let's see how well that's going to curve to it perfectly least amount of nodes the better and this one goes up a little farther left click at the top so we're going back on itself back 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 this is something, the plotting out of the design is something you can do with pen and paper when you're sitting and watching TV and plot out your design. And then once you get back to your computer, it's not that hard to do because you've plotted everything out. To me, that's the hardest part is figuring out how to do it so it's exactly twice. And it's a bit of a puzzle. I do, however, enjoy puzzles, so I like doing it. Whoops, what did I do there? Did you see that? I did a right click instead of a left click. So left click because we want it to be a cusp. And look, we're almost done this part. We're almost done this part. So we're going to go up here 
and I'm just doing right clicks to get a nice curve and I'm going to follow this in quite close. I don't want to put too many nodes, but I'm following it in quite close and this kind of goes out here and it goes back and then this is where we started from. So it would be easier if we had it all in one and our nodes were still showing, but we can do this. And I'm gonna go and match them up after. So if you do make a mistake, no worries, I will show you because I did make a mistake hitting enter. It's not the end, we are gonna do it here. Now we wanna match up our nodes and these are all, that one was a right click, it should be. And this is a left click and right click, right click, left click, right click, left click. So you can see the value now of not putting too many nodes um, in your embroidery um, just in general because if you had to match up all these nodes and you did a whole bunch of them around the corner, you were going to be there a while. Whoops, so this is, I missed one, left click, now a right click. Now I can match them up. And if you need to zoom in, feel free to zoom in and put your auto scroll on so it works a little bit better for you. Just right clicks all around, right click, and then we're gonna left click here and we're gonna keep following. That was a left click because I can see that it's straight. And there we go, left click, and this is where we started from right here. So now I'm going to hit enter. And we did it. And let's stand back and look. Every part of this pumpkin has two passes, exactly two passes. Why don't we change the color so we can see it a little bit prettier. So I'm just going back to my select button. And why don't we make it orange? And it's two parts because I messed that up. Although it won't matter when it's stitching out, it'll just continue. Now, if you're looking at it like this, if you noticed before on the ones that I pressed enter, enter before I pressed enter, these ones after are just fine. They're matched up. But before, eh, not so good there. So we should probably fix that. So we're gonna select the small one. It's just a little boo-boo and you guys are gonna do it. So I wanted to show you guys how to fix it exactly. And the start point, I think was right there. You gotta remember where you start and stop. So that's that. So there's the nodes. I'm just kind of looking at it. There we go. I can figure this out and you just really wanna go in there and match up your lines and to do that I'm just gonna shift around I'm still in the um, reshape mode and I'm just gonna shift them around till they match exactly and it's um let's zoom in and maybe we can see it better um, see how these ones are done perfectly perfectly because we could see the nodes so if you can't see the nodes no worries we can still make this perfect it's just gonna take a few more minutes to do it and there we go. And this part is a little bit off. Oh, that's right. I said I messed up a little bit on that, didn't I? Well, this is the time to fix it. It's pretty good up until you see that one's not quite on. Match it up. It's easy to see when you do it like this. So it is a lot easier. I see what the problem is there. One's a circle, one's a square. So that's a straight point and that's a curve. So let's click on that one. And you can tell that you have it selected because it's blue and you hit the space bar and it turns to a curve. And it works the opposite. If it's the curve, you hit the space bar and it will turn to a point. So that'll make it better. This one's a little bit off. So a little bit precision work. And, and this is just, you know, beginner. We want this to be absolutely perfect. So this one's a little off. We matched up there. We just maybe put it, you could see exactly where the lines are. We must have something. Ah, see what the problem is right there. If we highlight that one and it turns dark blue or purple it is and delete it, and hit the right key, delete, there's your problem. So you might have to look a little bit for it. I moved some other ones around where I didn't really need to. And now it's perfect. Now, how are we up at the top? So a little bit of a perfectionist here because this one doesn't match. It just makes it 
it just makes it look better in the end. Now I'm going to click on here and that turned it into a straight point. I'm going to hit the space bar and it turns it into a curve. And there we go. Are we right on? We're a little bit off there. I'm not going to fiddle around with it forever, but I just want to show you guys how you can fix up. If you happen to hit enter, you really, really don't have to start it again. Now it's not perfect. You guys can play around with it a little bit more. You guys get the idea of it. And let's go on select. Let's take a look at it. Let's go to the picture and we're going to right click and we're going to do hide selected. And there you have it. How is that? That's looking fantastic. Look how nice it looks here. And if we want to watch it stitch out, we're going to see that it goes exactly twice around it. Oh, except for I don't want the lettering. So hold on. Let's stop. I forgot about the lettering. We don't need to watch you. We know you're there though. Let's go delete and let's get our pumpkin in the middle. And this is how I double check to make sure that it's going around exactly twice. I've slowed it down and we have outlines on so we can see that's once, that's twice on that one. Excellent. Back down. So this will teach you a lot about plotting, a lot about plotting. That's twice. I guess we could speed it up just a little bit. Once, twice. And if you're doing a more complicated design, this would have a little more value. And it's going around the outside. So the outside now has two passes. How cool is that? And that is all basically all there is to it. It's how you put everything together in the end. So let's bring our um, unhide all. Let's bring our picture back because let's work on this part, the stem. Now if you zoom in too much, it's going to get really pixelated because I didn't pick a great picture, um, but that's okay. You don't often get great pictures. You can still do great embroidery. So let's go up here. Now for this one, it's a smaller piece and we can bend the rules a little bit. So we're going to do the up and down thing again, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but that's okay. Maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. If I missed them, we can figure it out now, which there's another ridge. It looks like here, maybe a bit shorter, maybe not. Now again, don't do too many nodes because we want them to match up and you'll be here all day matching up nodes and we don't want that. And there we go. So, so far everything has twice but the outside. So I think I'm going to bring it here and then I'm going to go back up around. And I think that should look okay. And we can do this in a dark green color or even black. Oops, I missed there. Such a miss. Dark green or black color. And there's a few things we can do to play around with it. So there we go. Let's hit enter. That did it in orange. And that looks kind of weird because I've got to change it. And let's hide our picture again so we can see. And that looks pretty good. Now, I don't mind that. It's kind of weird when you look up at it close. We can do that again and do it a different way, but that is the general idea of it all. So let's um, let's move the stem aside and we're going to try it again. We need to have our picture up, so unhide all. And I kind of liked how that went, but I'd like it a little bit smoother. So let's zoom in, even though I said, again, it's a terrible picture. And let's try that again and let's try to maybe curve it a little bit more so it looks smoother. So I just did a couple of right clicks in there. Following along, maybe we will think outside the embroidery box and do it a little bit differently. I kind of think maybe that might work better. Left click and I'm going to curve this a little bit. Right click and we're going to go here 
Now this is where our grid can come in handy. So we're gonna bend the rules just a little bit and maybe we can do some stitches. Now if you're doing stitch on top of a stitch like this and you go here, say you're doing a mock zigzag and you're doing it here, you have to realize how close that is. It's almost overlapping. It's, uh, it does, you zoom in and we're at an insane amount of zoom in. It looks further away, but when you're at the right amount of zoom, um, remember this is a millimeter. So I don't want any of that, but we're gonna play around with our lines a little bit and see what we can do. And this is where I started saying, this is where your grid can come in handy and you can see what you're doing better. So what I'm doing here is just manual stitches and I'm gonna have to go back on them because remember, everything goes exactly twice. And let's follow here from the bottom. So whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna have to go back on, except for the up parts here. So let's do this one a bit shorter. And what I'm doing is just kind of adding in a little more detail to it, just to see how good it's gonna look. So we wanna, I kinda wanna go on this kind of a way. And these two don't match. We don't want to overlap anything. And we could go here and we could do a couple of lines like this just to give it maybe a tad of shading. Now I have to go back on everything that I just did, which is fine. You might want to do this in a couple of parts. I don't even know how this is going to look. We don't need to go up because it already has two. We don't need to go up because it already has two. Same there. Now these ones, hopefully you guys can see this. Maybe in the magic of editing, I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the stitches better. And I'm just doing it twice and hitting the same spots. Um, I am zoomed in to the correct amount. And I can see them if you need to change your background to see it better that's fine. If you don't get them right on, that's fine. You know how to fix it. And we just might go up and do some fixing. I missed one and there it is. It's kind of in the gray. So it was a little hard to see. There we go. And I think that one, and then this is a right click and right click and left click. And we're back to where we started. No jump stitches, no nothing. And that's orange. And let's change it to black. Let's get rid of our picture. And let's go hide selected. And that is a little bit better. That is a l adding a little bit more. These guys I would probably change, but this is what we started off with, keeping it simple. This is a little more detail. I really like this. I really like this. And if you look, if you're close up, you can see I almost have them a millimeter apart. You really don't want them much closer than that or you're gonna end up with a pile of stitches. But this is when you're zoomed in and I'm zoomed into an outrageous number again. You can see and you can figure out that, you know, the stitch length we've got right now is two millimeters because I can see it right here. I can see that it pretty much spans two boxes and we want this to be the same. So you don't want a clump of stitches. These ones I would probably slant up that way. Why don't we, uh, why don't we fix that right now? Click on this because it's all in one. Now remember, at this stage, if you're moving it, you, you have to move all of it because we want it to go exactly twice, right? Exactly twice. So another way of doing it is you can hold down the left key and you can do a bounding box and look, both are selected. And the problem there is that I need both of those selected. Now we don't want that to go over that many times, do we? No, we could do it like that and see how it looks. I just wanted the slant to change a little bit and see how that looks. Now that crosses over, I'm not sure how great that is. We could maybe fill in a little bit there. Oops, but that's not twice. Remember exactly twice. Why don't we do that? A little bit of fiddling, as long as you remember to pull both of them, I might actually, you know, fill this part in a little bit, exactly twice. Now this one's off, but you can, you can, you know, kind of lose control being fiddly about it. So no need for that. I think that looks much better. I'm going to delete that one. 
And there you have it. That is red work. And red work is exactly twice. I kind of like this shading. I like this side, not so much this side. You guys come up with something and see. And see if you can come up with something even better. Even better for this stem. Now, now that we've done it, why don't we play with it a little bit? Of course, of course. So this is just a single stitch. And let's look at the different stitches so you can see... I'm going to shift select here so you can see the different looks on them. One of my favorite is the back stitch. And what that did is it makes it look a lot thicker. And I think that's great. Let's do this guy in, in uh, back stitch too. Yeah, see, to me that looks better. There's nothing wrong with the, the regular traditional way or anything like that. Um, another really groovy thing you can do is... Um, put a little motif stuff in there and I'm going to show you how to do that so it can be we're, we're now bending the rules we did it the right way and we're now kind of adventuring off and doing different things so I like the back stitch you can try a triple stitch I really like that too that's a bit neater to me than than um the back stitch you can also play around with the stitch length now I've selected the big one. Let's turn our grid off so you can see me a little better, see what I'm doing. So let's put the stitch lengths at three and now watch the difference in it. See how completely different it looks and that instead of two inches, it's now three inches. And I turned off my grid and I shouldn't have, but let's zoom back in. You can see right here, this is one stitch and you can see that it's three millimeters. I said inches. Sorry, I meant millimeters. You can also play around with the variable um, variable run length. And if you take it off, every stitch is exactly, exactly that. You can see the difference here. This, because it was in a second part, um, this is different than that because this is um, still on the back stitch. So you can clearly see, and it gives you a completely, completely different look. So let's go back on that and look in, and let's see, why don't we try to between 2.5 is fine. Now, if you do something like you want to change something completely and you do five, you're gonna see, whoops, I did 50, let's not hit enter. You can see how that looks. Now that may or may not stitch out very well. It's not quite the look that we're looking for, but you can see how completely different it looks with that. So let's hurry up and put that back to 2.5 hit enter. That's about normal for me. I do like the back stitch too. So this is where whatever you like will work. Whatever you like. You could even mess around to do motif stitches. Okay, obviously that one doesn't work right. And remember, it's going to go um, over exactly twice. So if you're going to use motif stitches, you might want to change that a little bit. Um, we can do... Um, you could actually do, let's look at the candle wicking. Um, again, you don't want it to go around twice, but look, with just a few clicks, even with the work that we did, we have a candle wicking pumpkin. How cute is that? Um, let's look, are there different ones? Different patterns. There's a couple of different candle wicking patterns. Again, you don't want it to go over twice, but we're, we're just checking it out. Pretend it's only one, so I don't have to keep saying it. That's really cute, and that's basically how you do it, except for the ones, and I like that. So we could try another motif. Um, we could see single motifs. Not sure how many of them will work, but you know what? I am always up for trying. Let's see if we can find one that's just like stars or something, the circle we did. And again, remember only once. I'm looking, what I'm looking for is one that's on the line, like this might work. Something like this right here, let's try that and see. See, you could get away with that again. You can see, hey look, you can see where we did it perfectly and where we're a little bit off because the motifs are off. But if you were going to do this again, that even has a nice look up at the top here. They're kind of piled on there, but that's okay. But these are just options. You'd have to digitize it a different way. How about that one? Yeah, that one looks fine. Well, even something like that, you'd have to mess around and... Oh, I like that one. You'd have to play around with it. 
See how cute that looks. See how absolutely cute that looks. I love it. These are a bit off, but you can see where we have it perfectly aligned, which I wasn't too bad now, was I? You can see how great that would look. So do it once over and change it to motif if you're going to do that. Not all of them are going to work. Some of them have kind of a weird effect to it, and you'd have to try it with a single pass to make it look right and of course you can mess around with all the settings remember I did change the stitch length and I did change everything I think that's looking good I think that's absolutely looking good so I don't really want I don't really want any motif in it so let's go back up and what should we put it on uh triple I kind of like the triple so Let's do that, but let's change something. Let's do red work and, red work and, and this is how I would do this, because you can, you know, add to your red work. Let's um, digitize close shape, and we're gonna do an outline, so I have that selected, and I have my color orange selected, and we're going to go here, and we're gonna kind of, oh, actually, I don't want an outline. Boop, boop, boop. Sound effects may make everything better. And we'll just leave it where it is. And we want to come close to what we were doing because we want the shape to be nice. So we're kind of, uh, you know, thinking outside the box. This may not necessarily work, but you know what? It might left click, right click, left click. If you keep in good habits, when you go over top something like this, it makes it a whole lot easier because I know that I put a curve stitch there and I know I put a left point there and I know these are all curves too. Uh, that one's poorly placed curve, but okay. So that one is not, there we go. Now curve, now curve, now curve. And I'm just following along and we're going to get here and we're going to play around with it because we're going to use that as an outline. It's red work, I know, but let's move it up because we want it to stitch first. Even right like that looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. But I thought, why don't we change this to motifs? Not that one. Why don't we change it to a different motif? Let's pull out our box here and let's see if we can find something that's going to allow these lines to show up. So we want, well, see right there. I think that is so cute, right like that. Not too busy. You can still see the lines of the pumpkin. So it's red work. Oh, that one's cute too. It's red work and that's how I would call it. I actually really like that one. I really do. So you can play around. I wouldn't I see that one's almost getting too busy. I try to keep it sparse. That one actually looks cool too. I like the first one. That one's nice too. And you could always make this part, the motif part, um, a darker color of orange or a lighter color of orange and do the outline and everything in a different kind of shade of orange and it'll give it even more of a special effect. So for this one, I'm going to leave it at that one. Uh, did I like that one best? I like that one best. Let's try this one. See, that one's almost too busy. Not bad though. Let's try that one. Let's leave it at that. Exit out there. I'm thinking that looks really, really cute. So that is our red work design uh, with a few things. Why don't we do the stem in the same way, seeing how we're gonna leave it like that. So digitize, close shape and it would be really cool if you could match up your points so another benefit again and again to not um to not putting too many points in because it's really hard when you get into precision work like this so if you do the same things all the time makes it so much easier hit enter let's move this up I don't want that. Let's have a look at that. Actually, it's kind of cool with a green, not too bright. How about dark green? See, even that, just like that, just by adding a few things to our red work, we're making it even better. So why don't we try that one in a motif? We don't want, you know, everything done in motif, but let's just see. Not that one, not it. 
just trying to think of something that would kind of flow with what we're doing. And you might have to make adjustments to it. See, that doesn't work. That, if you made it smaller, that might work. Let's try this one. Just trying to find one that's going to work. I kind of like that. That's kind of getting a little bit closer to the effect that I wanted. More of a filled in one and in a different color so it's going to show up better. See, that's too big. That's too big too. But this is how I do it. I, I'm kind of, I have it in my mind of what I want to do. And it's just a matter of finding the right look for it. That is probably it. I kind of like that. That's even better. Just for the look that I want it. You don't want to go motif crazy or anything like that. But just for the look that I want for this one. I think I'm going to stick with that. That kind of works it for me. And we have a, ni a nice light density um, design. That's red work plus motif stitches. And if you don't like any of those let's hide them just for now um where's my hide hide selected well that took a minute and the picture and this one hide selected if you want to do something a little bit more then keep adding to it but that right there is your basic red work pumpkin here inside hatch embroidery software thanks everyone for watching the class we're going to do more classes on red work and we're going to do more complicated classes on red work but this is the first one and this is how you do it exactly twice and then you can think out of the box and add a few things um, maybe the next one we will do a jack-o-lantern and get lots of detail where it's lacking here. So you do it traditionally, you can change the stitches, you can change the stitch length, and then you can add to it by thinking outside the box. So thanks everyone for watching.